Welcome to the Cube Conversation here. I'm John Furrier with the Cube in Palo Alto, California. We've got two great guests here featuring Armory, who has with them Patreon, open source, and talking open source and the enterprise. I'm your host, John Furrier with the Cube. Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for coming on. Really appreciate. It. We've got two great guests: Ben Mappin, SVP, uh, strategic partner at Armory, and Ian Delahorn, S staff SRE at Patreon. Gentlemen, you know, open source and enterprise is here, and we want to talk about it. Thanks for coming on. Appreciate it. Yeah, thank you, John. Really happy to be here. Thank you to the Cube and, and your whole crew. Um, I'll start with a quick intro. My name is Ben Mappin, one of Armory's founders, lead strategic partnerships, as John mentioned. Um, you know, it all it really starts with a premise that traditional businesses, um, such as hotels, banks, car manufacturers, are now acting and behaving much more like software companies than they did in the past. And so if you believe that that's true, what does it mean? It means that these businesses need to get great at delivering their software um, and specifically to the cloud like AWS. And that's exactly what Armory uh, aims to do for our customers. Um, we're based on open source Spinnaker, which is a continuous delivery platform. And, um, and I'm very happy that Ian uh, from Patreon is here to talk about our journey together. Ian, introduce yourself, what you do at Patreon, what Patreon does, and then why are you guys together here? What's the, what's the story? Absolutely. Uh, hi, uh, John and Ben, thanks for, uh, thanks for having me. Um, so I am Ian, I am a site reliability engineer at Patreon. And uh, Patreon is a membership platform for creators. And uh, what we're, our mission is to get creators paid, uh, changing the way the art is valued so that creators can make money uh, mm -hmm. by having a membership relationship with, uh, with fans. And uh, we are, we're built on top of AWS uh, and we are using Spinnaker with Armory to uh, deploy our applications uh, that you know, help, help creators get paid basically. Talk about the original story, Ben. How you guys together? What brought you together? Um, obviously, Patreon is well known in the creator circles. Congratulations, by the way, all your success. You've done a great service for the industry <laughs> and have changed the game. You were doing creators before it was fashionable, um, and also you got some cutting edge um, uh, decentralization business models as well. So, uh, again, we'll come back to that in a minute. But Ben, talk about how this all comes together. Yeah, yeah. So um, Ian's got a great uh, kind of origin story on mm -hmm. our relationship together. I'll give him a lead-in which is um, you know, what we've learned over the years from our large customers is that in order to get great at deploying software, it really comes down to three things or at least three things. The first being velocity. You have to ship your software with velocity. So if you're deploying your software once a quarter or even once a year, that does no good to your customers or to your business. Like just code sitting in a feature branch on a shelf more or less, uh, not uh, creating any business value. So you have to ship with speed. Second, you have to ship with reliability. So um, invariably there will be bugs, there will be some outages, but um, you know, one of the things that Armory provides with Spinnaker open source is the ability to create hardened deployment pipelines so that you're testing the right things at the right times with the right folks involved to, to do reviews. And if there is, uh, uh, hopefully not, but if there is a problem in production, you're isolating that problem to a small group of users and then we call this a progressive deployment or a canary deployment where you're deploying to a small number of users, you measure the results, make sure it's good, expand it and expand it. And so um, I think you know, preventing outages is, is incredi incredibly important. And then the last thing is being able to deploy multi-target, multi-cloud. And so in the AWS ecosystem, we're talking about uh, EC2, ECS, EKS, Lambda. And so I think that these, um, pieces of value or kind of the, the pain points that, that enterprises face um, can resonate with uh, a lot of companies out there, including uh, Ian and Patreon. So I'll, I'll let you tell the, the story. Go ahead, Ian. Ian, go ahead. Absolutely, thanks Thanks for the intro, Ben. Uh, so background, uh, background of our partnership with uh, Armory is uh, back, in, back in February of 2019, we had a uh, a payments um, payments slowdown for payments processing, and uh, we were risking not getting creators paid in time, which is uh, not great for creators because they rely on us for income to be able to pay themselves, pay their rent or mortgage, but also pay staff because they have video editors, uh, website admins, uh, people of that nature working for them. 
Um, and there were there are very there's very many root causes to this to this incident all kind of culminated at once. Um, one of the things that we saw was that deploying uh, de deploying fixes to remediate this took too long. Um, we're taking at least 45 minutes to deploy a new version of the application. And so we've had continuous delivery before um, using a custom custom home built rolling deploy. Uh, we needed to get that time down. We also needed to be secure uh, in our knowledge of like that deploy was stable. Uh, so we had had deploys that would break in the middle uh, due to various factors uh, that, that can happen during deploy. Previously, I had used uh, Spinnaker uh, at previous employers. I had been set it up myself uh, and introduced it. And I knew about it. I knew like, oh, this is something we could utilize. This would be great. But the Patreon team, the Patreon SRE team at the time was two people. So I don't have the ability to manage Spinnaker on my own. Uh, it's a complex open source product. Uh, it can do a lot of things. There's a lot of knobs to tweak, a lot of various settings you and stuff you need to know about. Um, tangentially, uh, one of the co-founders of, uh, of Armory had been, uh, had hit, had hit me up earlier. It's like, Hey, have you heard of Armory? Uh, we're doing this thing, open source Spinnaker. Uh, we're packaging this and managing it. Uh, check us out if you want. And I kind of like filed it away. Like, okay, well that might be something we can use later. And then, you know, like two weeks later, I was like, oh, wait, this company that does Spinnaker, uh, I know of them, we should probably have a conversation with them and uh, engage with them. And so you hit him up and said, hey, uh, too many knobs and buttons to push, what's the deal? <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah, so I, was, so I was like, hey, so by the way, about that thing, uh, yeah. how, how soon can you get someone, get someone over here? So Ben, take us through the progression because that really is how things work in the open source. Open source is really one of those things where a lot of community outreach, a lot of people are, you're, you're really a one degree or two separation from someone who either wrote the project or is involved in the project. Here's a great example. He saw the need for Spinnaker. The business model was there for him to solve. Okay, fixes, rolling deployments, homegrown, all the things, pick your, pick your use case. But he wanted to make it easier. This tends, this is kind of a pattern. Um, what did you guys Absolutely. do? What's, what's the next step? How, how did this go from here? Yeah, you know, Spinnaker being open source is critical to Armory's success. Uh, many companies, not just Patreon, it, open source software I think is not really debatable anymore in terms of being applicable to enterprise companies. Um, but the thing with selling open source software to large companies is that they need a backstop. They need not just enterprise support, but they need features and functionality that enable them to use that software um, at scale and safely. And so those are really the things that, that we focus on. And we use open source as a, really it's, it's a great community um, to collaborate and to uh, contribute fixes that other companies can use, other companies contribute fixes and functionality that we then use. Um, but it's, it's really a great place to get feedback and to find new customers that perhaps need that uh, enhanced level of functionality and support. And, and I'm very, very happy that Patreon was one of those companies. Okay, so let's talk about the Patreon. Okay, obviously scaling is a big part of it. You're an SRE, site reliable mm -hmm. engineers for folks who don't know what that is. Um, it is your, your job is essentially you know, managing scale. Um, some say you're the DevOps manager, but that's not really the right answer. What is uh, the SRE role at Patreon? Sh share with folks out there who are either Think, have an SRE, they don't even know it yet, or need to have SREs because this is a huge transition that, uh, and, and new, new and emerging must have role in companies. Right, yeah, we're, um, the SRE at Patreon covers a lot, we cover a wide swath of, uh, wide swath of, of, of things that we work with and, and areas that we consider to be our, our purview. Uh, not only are we working on, uh, you know, working with our AWS environment, but we also are involved in how can we make the site more reliable or performant uh, so that uh, so that creators and fans have a good experience. Uh, so we work with our content delivery numbers, our caching strategies for caching, uh, caching assets. Uh, we work inside the application itself for doing performance. Uh, performance enhancements is also improving observability with distributed tracing and metrics and a lot of that stuff, but also on the build and deploy side, if we can if we can get that deploy time faster, like give engineers faster feedback on uh, features that they're working on or bug fixes, uh, and also being secure and knowing that uh, the the code that they're working on gets delivered uh, reliably. 
Yeah, and then also you have the continuous delivery is always the 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 killer killer yeah. workflow. I got to ask you guys both the Spinnaker question here. Well, how is Spinnaker? Um, well, what, how, how does Spinnaker being an open source project help you guys? I mean, obviously open source code is great. Um, how has that been significant and beneficial for both Armory and Patreon? Yeah, I'll, I'll take the first stab at this one. Um, and it starts at the beginning. Spinnaker was created by Netflix. And since uh, Netflix open sourced it four or five years ago, there have been countless and uh, significant contributions from many other companies, including Armory, including AWS, and those contributions collectively push the industry forward and allow the uh, the companies that you know that use open source Spinnaker or Armory can, they can now benefit from all of the collective effort together. So just that community aspect working together um, is huge, absolutely huge. And you know, open source, I guess, on the go-to-market side, is a big driver for us. You know, there's many many companies using open source Spinnaker in production that are not our customers yet. And we, we survey them. We want to know how they're using open source Spinnaker so that we can then improve open source Spinnaker, but also build features that are critical for uh, large companies to run at scale, deploy at scale, deploy with velocity and with uh, reliability. Ian, yeah, what's your take on, on uh, the benefits of Spinnaker being open source? A lot of what Ben, uh, it's been really beneficial uh, to be able to uh, like, be able to go in and look at the source code for components if I'm wondering something like, why is this thing working like this or how did they solve this? Uh, it's also been uh, useful for, uh, I can go ask the community for uh, for advice on things if Armory doesn't, uh, has a, the, doesn't have the time or bandwidth to work on some things. Uh, I've been able to ask the special interest groups and the open source community, like, can we uh, can we help improve this or something like that? And I've also been able to commit simple bug fixes for features that I've that I've needed. It's like, well, I don't need to I don't need to go engage Armory on this. I can just like I can just write up a simple patch and and have that out for review. You know, that's the beautiful thing about open source is you get the source code, um, and that's and some people just think it's so easy. Ben, you know, just hey, just give me the open source, I'll code it. I got an unlimited resource team. <laughs> not, um, not always the case. So I got to ask you guys on Patreon, uh, why use a company like Armory if you have the open source code? And Armory, why did you build the business on the open source project like Spinnaker? Yeah, you know, like I, you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, uh, like I like I said earlier the. Patreon, the Patreon SRE team was, uh, was and is fairly small. There's two people now, we're six people, or two people then, we're six people now. Uh, so being sure we could run uh, Spinnaker on our own if we if we wanted to, uh, and but then we'd have no time to do anything else basically. And that's not the best use of our of our creators' money, or our fans, the, the fans paying the creators' money since we you know, obviously take a percentage on top of that. And we, we need to spend our that money well. Um, and having Armory, who's dedicated to the Spinnaker, uh, is dedicated, uh, involved in the open source project, but also they're experts on this. And they, was something that would take me like a week of stumbling around trying to find documentation on how to set this thing up. They've done this like 15, 20 times and they can just go, oh yeah, this is what we do for this and let me go fix it for you. It's like sports, that's you know, that's good score. You know, you got a teammate. I think that's where what you're getting at. I got to ask you, what other hmm. things does that free you up? Because this is the classic business model of life. You know, you have a partner, mm -hmm. you're moving fast. It slows you down to get into it. Sure, you can do it yourself, but why? It's faster to go with go together with a partner and, and, and a wingman, if you will. Mm -hmm. What things did, does that free you up to work on as an SRE? So that's freed me up to work on uh, the bigger parts of our uh, build and deploy Python. It's freed me up to work on uh, moving from uh, EC2 based deploys onto a containerization strategy. Uh, it's freed me up to work on more uh, broader observability issues instead of just being laser focused on uh, running an operating spinnaker. Yeah, and that really kind of highlights, I'm glad you said that because that highlights what's going on. You had a lot mm -hmm. of speed and velocity, you got scale, you got security and you got new challenges you got to fix and, and move fast because it's a whole new world. So again, this is why I love cloud native, right? So you got open source, you got scale, uh, and you guys, are, it's, it's applying directly to the, to the infrastructure of the business. Um, so Ben, I got to ask you, Armory um, co-founder, um, why did you guys build your business on an open source project like Spinnaker? What was the mindset? How did you attack this? What did you guys do? Take us through that piece because this is truly a great entrepreneurial story about open source. 
Yeah, yeah. I'll give you the the abridged version, which is that uh, my co-founders and I, we solved the same problem, which is CD at a previous company, but we did it kind of the old fashioned way. We, we home rolled, we hand rolled it ourselves. We built it on top of Jenkins and it was great for that company. But, and that was kind of the inspiration for us to then ask questions. Uh, hey, is this bigger? Um, we went at the time we found that uh, Spinnaker had just been, uh, you know, dog fooded inside of Netflix and they were open sourcing it. And we thought it was a great opportunity for us to uh, partner. Um, but the bigger reason is that Spinnaker is a platform that deploys to other platforms like AWS and Kubernetes. And the, the sheer amount of surface area that's required to build a great product is enormous. And I actually believe that the only way to be successful in this space is to, to be open source, to have a community of large companies and passionate developers that contribute the roads, if you will, to deploy into various targets. And so uh, that's reason number one for it being open source and us wanting to build our business on top of open source. And then the second reason is because we focus almost exclusively on uh, solving enterprise you know, scale problems, um, uh, we have a platform that needs to be extensible and open source is by definition extensible. So our customers, I mean, Ian just had a great example, right? Like he needed to fix something. He was able to do so, solve it in open source. And then, you know, shortly thereafter that, that fix in mainline gets into the armory official build and, and then he can consume his fix. So we see a lot of that from our other customers. And then even, uh, you know, take a very, very large company. They may have custom auth that they need to integrate with, but yeah. that doesn't, that's not in open source Spinnaker, but they can go and build that yeah. um, themselves. Yeah, it's real, it really is the new modern way to develop. And I, you know, last AWS startup showcase last season, Emily Freeman gave a talk on, you know, you know retiring, I call killing the uh, software um, uh, SDLC, um, the life cycle of how software was developed in the past. And I got to ask you guys and to end, end this CUBE conversation, because this is kind of like the, the kind of the big wave we're on now is cloud scale, open source, cloud native, data security, all being built in on this, in the pipelines to your point as SREs enabling a new infrastructure and a new environment for people to build essentially SaaS. So I got to ask you guys as, and you mentioned it Ben, the old way you hand rolled something, Netflix open source something, you got look at Lyft with Envoy. I mean, large scale companies are donating their stuff into open source and people are getting on top of it and building it. So the world's changed. So I got to ask you, What's the difference between standing up a SaaS application today versus say five to eight years ago? Because you know, we all see salesforce.com, you know, they're, they're, they built their own data center. Cloud scales change the dynamics of how software is being built. And with open source accelerating every quarter, you're seeing more growth in software. How has building a platform for applications changed? And how has that changed how people build SaaS applications? Ben, what's your take on this? It's kind of a, a thought, thought, you know, thought exercise here. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't even call it a thought exercise. We're seeing it firsthand from our customers. And then I'll, you know, I'll, I'll give my answer, Ian, you can weigh in on like practical, like what you're actually doing at, at Patreon with SaaS, but the, the cost and the uh, kind of um, entry fee, if you will, for building a SaaS application has tremendously dropped. You don't need, to buy servers and put them inside data centers anymore. You just spin up a VM or a Kubernetes cluster with AWS. AWS has led the way in public cloud to make this incredibly easy. And the tool sets being built around cloud native like Armory and like many other companies in the space are making it even easier. So we're just seeing the proliferation of, uh, of software being developed and, and hopefully, you know, Armory is playing a role in, in making it easier and better. So before we get to Ian for a second, I just want to just double down on it because this is a great conversation. That implies that there's going to be a, lot, a new migration of apps everywhere, right? A tsunami of clutter, uh, good or bad? Is that good or bad? Or is it all open source? Is it all good, Ben? <laughs> Absolutely good. It's, uh, for sure there will be uh, you know, good stuff developed and, and not so good stuff developed, but survival of the fittest will hopefully uh, promote those, uh, the best apps with the, the highest value to the end user and, and society at, at large. 
um, and push us all forward, so. Ian, what's your take? Obviously Kubernetes, you're seeing things like observability, talking about how we're managing stateful and services that are being deployed and teared down in real time, automated. All new things are developing. How does building a true scalable SaaS application change today versus say five, eight years ago? Uh, I mean, like you said, there's a, there's a lot, there's a lot new, uh, both open source and SaaS products available uh, that you can use to build to scale stuff like if you're going to you needed to build like secure authentication instead of having to roll that out you could go with something like Okta or Auth0 you can just like pull that off the shelf uh, stuff for like managing push notifications before that was like something really hard to really hard to do then Firebase came on the scene uh, and also for managing state and applications stuff like that um, and also for like being being able to deliver code before you had Jenkins, maybe or even before that you didn't really have anything. Jenkins came along, uh, and then now you have uh, open source projects like Spinnaker that you can use to deliver. And now you have companies built around that that you can just go and say, "Hey, uh, can you please help us uh, deliver this? Like, can you just help us uh, enable us to be able to build." Uh, build our products so that we can focus on delivering value to our, our creators and fans instead of having to focus on yeah. uh, uh, on other things. So build it builds faster, you can compose stuff faster, you don't have to roll your own code, you can just roll your own modules basically and then exactly. you know, proprietary on top of it. Absolutely. Yeah, and that's why commercial open source is booming. Guys, thank you so much. Ben, congratulations on Armory. Ian, great to have you on from Patreon. Well-known, uh, successful yeah. company. Congratulations, if you don't know Patreon, check it out. They have changed the game on creators and leading the industry. Ben, great, uh, great job with Armory and Spinnaker. Thanks for coming on. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Okay, I'm John Furrier here with theCUBE Conversation in Palo Alto. Thanks for watching.